Have you ever wondered how big trucks get cleaned? Well, we're about to find out. I'm here at a giant truck wash. These trucks drive for miles and miles, delivering important things all over the country, which means they also get very dirty. This truck wash is so popular that there's a queue of muddy trucks all waiting to get cleaned. And it can clean all sorts of different trucks. Big lorries, gas tankers, even car transporters. The trucks start by driving into the truck wash very carefully and stop once they're fully inside. The cleaning team begin by spraying special soapy water over the whole truck. This soap gets to work straight away loosening all of that grease and grime. If the dirt is really bad or difficult to reach, the team will use long brushes to get to these hard to reach places. Then it's time to turn on the rollers. This huge machine is controlled from these switches here. The cleaning team select what sort of truck is in the wash so that the rollers can clean the right places on the vehicle. There's three rollers in total two that clean each side of the truck and one that cleans the front, the top and the back. The soft rollers wipe all of the muck away and the spray nozzles rinse the truck clean. The huge machine that carries the rollers moves forwards and backwards along the truck on rails, just like a train would. This truck wash is very special too. The dirty water goes down the drain and is magically turned into clean water in this pump room. That means that most of the dirty water is recycled and no water is wasted. If there's any bits that the machine has missed, it's time for the cleaning team to use some super powerful jets to blast off that stubborn dirt. Look at that! This lorry's as good as new, clean and sparkling. Good job team! See you again soon! Bye! everyone, Gecko here. I'm at Walk Mill in Cheshire to learn all about combine harvesters. Combine harvesters are one of the most important vehicles used on farms. Loads of the food we eat comes from plants that are grown in fields. All of this wheat needs to be harvested so it's a good job we've got this incredible combine harvester. This combine harvester is called Daisy. She's got lots of neat parts that make her so useful on the farm. Let's take a look. Just look at these massive caterpillar tracks. They're designed to move the combine harvester through the field even when the ground is very wet and muddy. They're like welly boots for wheels. The front of the combine harvester is made up of different parts which pull the wheat inside. Very sharp blades called teeth act like scissors and cut the wheat at the bottom. I wonder why they're called teeth. <laughs> 
do you eat your food like that? When the vehicle is full to the brim with wheat, a tractor with a trailer on the back drives next to the combine. The grain is carried up from the tank and fired out of a side pipe into the trailer. This is Ben and he's a farmer. His job is to drive and operate the combine harvester. And driving the tractor is Heather. She's also a farmer. And look, there's her sheepdog, Gary. Hey, hey, hey boy. Ben and Heather use their radios to talk to each other to make sure the vehicles are in the right place so the trailer can catch all of the falling grain. Look at them all working together. Teamwork makes the dream work. Hi Heather, can you please tell us a bit more about the different parts of the wheat? So this is the plant that we've been harvesting. As you can see, it grows in the soil at the bottom. Then we have the straw, which we use to bed animals down. And at the top, we have the head of the plant, which has the grain in it. We use the grain to make bread and cakes and biscuits. Because combine harvesters are so wide and bulky, they're too big to travel on most roads, especially the small country roads around these fields. To get from one field to another, Ben and his team need to take the front off the combine and put it on a trailer. Now that we've seen the amazing combine harvester harvesting the wheat, Let's head to the mill to see what happens with the wheat grains next. Here we are at Walk Mill, which is a flour mill. In here, they grind the wheat grain to make flour, which is then used to bake bread and make lots of other delicious foods like cakes. Check out this mega water wheel. The river pushes against the water wheel, making it spin which turns the gears inside. Terrific! These gears then spin these special stones so that they can crush the grain into tiny pieces until they become flour. And this is the end result. Like these delicious cakes. Can I, uh, can I please have one now? They smell delicious! Thanks to Heather, Ben and everyone at Walk Mill for showing us their incredible combine harvester. Until next time, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone, Gecko here. Are you wondering why I'm stood in the middle of this big field? Well, today I'm going up, up, up into the sky in a brilliant hot air balloon. Hot air balloons come in all sorts of different colours, shapes and sizes. And they work a little bit like this Gecko balloon I've got here. This balloon is filled with a gas called helium, which is lighter than the air outside the balloon. That means if I was to let this go, the balloon would fly upwards into the sky. Can you believe that a whole hot air balloon is packed up in this small trailer behind me? This is Ed and Ben. Ed's a hot air balloon pilot. They're unpacking the balloon and getting it ready for today's flight. This part is called the basket and that's where the people go. Next, Ed and Ben connect the burners to the basket. The burners are like the engine. They use fire to heat up the air inside the balloon to make it float high up into the sky. Hello, Ed. Hi, Gecko. Do you want to come for a balloon flight? Oh, yes, please. 
I'm so excited, Ed. Now it's time to attach the big balloon. Ed and Ben work as a team. Woohoo! Wow! This bag holds the entire balloon inside it. I'll let you into a little secret. Balloon pilots don't call this part the balloon. They call it the envelope. Whoa! Look how big it is! This is a fan. And Ed uses it to quickly fill the envelope with air. That's called inflation. It's getting bigger! Wow! This is what it's like inside the inflated balloon! Amazing! Remember, the balloon will only fly into the sky if the air inside is lighter. My old gecko balloon used helium gas, but this balloon heats the air inside and hot air rises. So now it's time to turn the burners on. As the air inside gets hotter, the envelope starts to float upwards. OK, Gecko, we're all set. It's up, up and away. Here we go! To go up, Ed fires up the burners, which pushes more hot air into the envelope. Woo! We're going higher and higher and higher! Wow! We're flying over fields, houses and villages. I feel like my old explorer friend, Phileas Frog. Ed, when did you realise you wanted to be a hot air balloon pilot? So Gecko, my parents took me to my first balloon festival when I was two years old and I was hooked. And then uh, about the age of four I decided that's what I wanted to do, I wanted to be a hot air balloon pilot. And here we are. It's so amazing to see the world from so high up. All of the people and cars look like little ants. It's the perfect place for a game of sky high, I spy with my little eye. I spy with my little eye, something beginning with... T town. I spy with my little eye, something beginning with... R River. Where are we going to, Ed? In fact, how do you steer this thing? Good question, Gecko. Well, there's no steering wheel, so we can't steer it like a car or an aeroplane. And if you're in the garden, you let a balloon go, it just flies away. So that's what happens with us. But we can use winds at different heights. Winds at different levels, they're at different layers, and they will start to go different directions. So using my experience as a pilot, I can use those winds to kind of steer to where I want to go. Because we don't quite know where we're going to end up, our old friend Ben is following us in the truck and he'll meet us in whatever field we land in. To make the balloon come down ready for landing, Ed stops heating the air inside the envelope. As the air inside cools, the balloon starts to float down. If he wants to make the balloon come down more quickly, Ed can lift a flap in the top of the envelope, which makes the hot air escape out of the top. And here we go. We're going down. I'm going to crouch down inside the basket and turn Gecko Cam on. Get ready for landing, everyone. Woohoo! What a thrill! And here's Ben 
right on time to come and help us pack the balloon away. Wowzers trousers! That really was a fantastic adventure floating across the sky. Thanks to everyone at Virgin Balloon Flights for showing us their magnificent hot air balloon in action. Until next time, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone! Gecko here! It's nice to be driving along with my old friend, Mr T. Gecko, I've got something amazing to show you today. I've been really busy creating a brand new ice cream factory. Wow, that sounds so cool. Can we go and have a look? Yeah, I've already got your friends, the mechanicals, there now, setting everything up for us. What? You've left the mechanicals on their own? In an ice cream factory? Uh-oh, that spells trouble. Let's hope there's no more mechanical mischief today. Now that the factory's squeaky clean again, please can you show me around? I think the best way for me to show you how my ice cream factory works, Gecko, is to make a brand new ice cream flavour. What do you think? I think that sounds delicious. But first, we need to put our protective clothes on. Let's get ice cream making! First, Mr T needs to make a special milk mix in this really big tank. He adds five bags of milk powder to some water. One, two, three, four, five! He gives it a stir with his big paddle to make sure it's mixing just fine. Then he adds sugar for sweetness and a few more secret ingredients. We're going to make a special gecko ice cream. So Mr T adds some bright green lime flavour. To make the mix into ice cream, you have to make it really, really cold so that it freezes. The mix gets moved from this big tank into the freezing machine. So Gecko, come on, let's do it. Let's make some lovely ice cream for you. But what are we going to make, Mr T? We're gonna make a lovely Gecko's Green ice cream dream just for you. So first of all, Gecko, what we do is we get the machine and we open it there and we get lots of ice cream coming out. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Wow, look at the ice cream all coming out. Look at it swirling around, Gecko. It is absolutely delicious. Ooh, look at the colour of that. Gecko, look at this. It's a lovely lime green flavour just for you. My favourite colour's green. Wow, there's loads in there. Well, Gecko, you have got an appetite, haven't you? So, Gecko, first of all, on your lovely ice cream, we are going to put on some blue bubblegum sauce. And the second sauce that we're going to put on, Gecko, is going to be some lovely, lovely strawberry sauce. Wow. And then, after that, because it's a special green ice cream just for you, we are going to put lots of these lovely green crunch crystals all over. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one, Gecko. 
and we're going to be healthy and put some lovely fruit on which is some of these nice green kiwis. Oh, I love kiwi fruit. Kiwi is the best. And always remember kids, make sure you have plenty of fruit. There. Doesn't that look amazing, Gecko? And then we got some lovely, lovely geckos. Wow. We'll get some of these lovely spanner cookies. Wow, look at them. We'll pop them in there. I think this is going to be amazing, this ice cream. So here we are then, Gecko is finally ready. Your masterpiece, Gecko's Green Ice Cream Dream. Wow, thank you so much, Mr. T. That looks delicious. I tell you what, Mr. T, it doesn't get much better than this. Absolutely, Gecko. I couldn't agree more. Thanks very much to Mr. T for showing us around his amazing ice cream factory today. For now, it's cheerio from me and Mr. T. Bye! Hello, everyone. I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here, and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tire with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter, to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. 
potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt, where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back. Forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. We'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!